everyone and welcome to our webinar on the APV Homogenizer Water Recycling System. Thank you for joining. Let me start by introducing myself and sharing some housekeeping rules for today. So as you can see, my name is Con O'Driscoll. I'm a Global Product Manager for Dispersion Products at SPX Flow. I'm based in England, but working with customers and colleagues globally. I'm very excited today to be able to bring you details of one of our newest innovations, the APV Homogenizer Water Recycling System. And as we get started, I'd like to share some housekeeping rules with you. First of all, please note that this webinar is being recorded and that will allow us to send you a recap afterwards if you are unable to join all of it. Your camera and audio are switched off at the moment, but you are able to enter comments and questions in the chat box, such as you see on the example here, and then we'll be able to come back and respond to your questions at the end of the presentation and follow up with any questions that we don't get to. And finally, after your attendance today, we're going to send you a link to a quick survey to give us feedback on how we've done or what you think of the webinar and the content and help us to make improvements to these communications going forward. It only takes a couple of minutes and we always appreciate your feedback so that we can do things better in future. OK, so let's look at the agenda that we're going to go through today. And we'll be talking about a general introduction. We'll be looking at what the HWRS system is and how it works and its key benefits. And then we'll go through some of the implementation steps for the system. And all of this will be bringing you details of how this system is such an exciting innovation for those who want to save water for homogenizers. So let's just start by a little bit of an overview of what an homogenizer is. I'm sure most of you know this already, but just let's just remind ourselves. Um, first of all, it's a positive displacer, displacement reciprocating pump, um, typically with three or five plungers. And those plungers are driven starting with the electric motor, driving a gear, through belts and pulleys typically. And that rotating movement through the crank is converted through connecting rods and crossheads to the linear movement of the plungers, similar to an engine in a car in a way. And of course, all of that movement creates heat, heat in the oil, uh, heat in the plungers potentially, and that heat needs to be cooled or lubricated to allow the homogenizer to run smoothly hour after hour, day after day. And so that's where the consumption of water in homogenizers comes in. It's to keep those cooling systems working properly and the lubrication systems working smoothly for continuous operation. So let's take a look at what the water consumption can be in a typical homogenizer, because very often this goes unseen. It's piped away or it's not seen on the floor because it's going to drain directly. And many people don't know how much they can consume. So on the table here, I've just tried to simplify it a little bit by looking at a range of sizes, which I've classified as small to extra large and other. And the typical water consumption in litres per hour that you see on the second column, is anywhere between 200 and 1200 litres per hour. And that's just on one homogenizer. So then we've taken an annual consumption view, taking two scenarios. The first one is 3,000 operating hours per year. Um, that's based on 10 hours per day, six days a week, and 50 weeks a year. And then on the right side is a more representative of continuous operation of 20 hours per day. So a typical high use process line. And as you can see from here, just one homogenizer in this range could be consuming anywhere between 600,000 and 7.2 million litres of water per year, just one homogenizer. And it's often, as I mentioned, a hidden water consumption, which isn't visible because the water is piped in and piped out. And so the challenge is, how do we look at ways of conserving that water? So now we get to what is the HWRS system and why now? Why have we looked at this technology now rather than previous uh, standards and previous designs for water reduction. So the key elements, what is it? It's essentially a groundbreaking technology for homogenizers, designed specifically for homogenizers, 
rather than trying to scale down, for example, a large scale utility plant. It's exclusive to SPX flow. So this is the first of its kind in the market. And it fits any brand homogenizer, not just APV, whether it's a new installation or a retrofit installation on an existing line. And the key benefits which that brings are sustainability, which is water and water cost reduction, integrity in terms of quality, in terms of uninterrupted operation, and plug and play. It's compact, it's automated, it's easy to install and integrate into your systems. So we're very excited about this technology and what it brings. And first, before we get into the details of what it is and how it works, let's look at why the environment and the, the conditions are right now for this sort of technology. And let's start with, well, why would we want to save water? There's a number of factors. Producers are looking for ways to reduce their water footprint on their components and systems and full lines. And that could be because a number of drivers, it might be cost or it might be sustainability goals. Doesn't matter, in fact. Water stress, which is the uh, potential shortage of water or drought or inability to have enough water to do the production targets. That water stress is increasing in various parts of the world. And certainly the awareness of water consumption is also increasing as people look to their overall environmental footprints in water and energy. And the water costs themselves are increasing, the cost of supply, the cost of treatment, driven by demand, but also driven by energy costs and various other input factors. So as we've looked at, homogenizers and many other items of equipment use clean water for cooling, lubrication, washing, many things. And typically that water is used once and then disposed of down the drain as part of the wastewater stream. And traditional water treatment systems have been based on large scale utility plants, collecting, distributing, treating water and getting it back to the point of use, relatively complex systems. The challenge, of course, is that once the water goes down the drain, it mixes with all of the other water streams from the waste in the plant. And then the treatment design becomes much more complicated. So the solution here involves a much more targeted solution for homogenizers. And remember, a single homogenizer, as we said, can consume more than 1000 litres of water per hour. So it's worthwhile looking at a solution. So as we think about those factors and summarizing the drivers, what, what causes this alignment on the need to reduce water? Well, I think we look at four factors and these drivers, one or all of these might be present in a particular situation. First, we have the water costs, which are increasing and the cost of producing water at the quality that's required for processes is increasing, as well as the treatment and disposal. We also have the issues of water availability, whether it's com supply constraints or extraction limits, which might prevent a plant to operate at the desired capacity or to expand capacity. And then moving clockwise, we have water consumption which is determined by the operating conditions, the running hours, the equipment size, the age of the equipment. As we saw from the previous uh, slides, the consumption will vary depending on those conditions, but for larger and particularly older homogenizers, that consumption can be considerable. And lastly, we have sustainability as a, as a theme, whether it's local or corporate or regional or national targets which are being set. And many producers are looking for ways to drive down utility, water, energy, other inputs based on any one or a number of these factors. And that's where the HWRS systems come in. It's reducing and recycling up to 97% of the water used by homogenizers. So whether it's for any one or all of these goals, the HWRS system supports the implementation of those goals. So let's take a little bit more detailed look at what, what it is, and then afterwards we'll look at how it works. So on the picture on the right here, you see the basic elements that are delivered in a stainless steel clad uh, skids. But it's a plug and play system which integrates to your water supply for your homogenizer. And as I mentioned, it's designed to recycle up to 97% of the water that's used in an homogenizer. 
in a closed loop sensing and sanitizing system. It runs continuously taking care of checking the water quality and re-sanitizing it for use. The system is fully automatic with simple user interface and can be integrated with newer existing homogenizers. The water quality is certified as PMO standards for process use. That's the pasteurized milk ordinance. It's an American standard that's widely recognized for process quality, clean water used in typical processing plants. The payback will depend on the water consumption and costs. And we'll look at some examples of that later in the presentation. And the system can be used for any homogenizer, as I mentioned, not just APV models. The capacity of the system is designed to give the optimal benefit for medium to large homogenizers and continuous process lines. And what that basically means is if you have a line that's only used for a few hours a day or a few days a week, then the system is not scaled for those sorts of situations. It's scaled for larger systems in terms of running continuously on medium to large homogenizers. OK, so let's take a look at a little more detail about how it works. And I'll walk you through the key parts. So summarizing it here, and then I'll have a graphic on the next page to show you the details in another way. There's a lot of detail here, but let's walk through it. The system comprised of two elements. Um, the smaller one is the water collection tank skid, and then the slightly larger one is the sanitation skid. The tank skid is placed next to the homogenizer, and there it collects the used lubrication and cooling water before it goes down the drain. During that collection, the tank skid continuously monitors the incoming water quality and provides a preliminary treatment. And as long as the water is in tolerance for quality, then it's pumped to the sanitation skid. If it's not in tolerance, then it goes to drain. Then in the sanitation skid, the water is filtered, it's sanitized further using ultraviolet light, it's monitored and cooled. And that recycled water is then pumped back to the homogenizer for continuous use. The system has redundant water quality sensors to monitor for impurities. So for example, if the water coming into the tank skid is outside of the set tolerance of quality, which is for example, turbidity, then the system will reject the water and resupply the city or municipal clean water supply to the homogenizer instead of recycling. At any time, there won't be an interruption to the homogenizer water supply because there are redundant valves and programming methods used to ensure that the water is always available. For example, if there's an alarm or if there's a leak of packings which is detected on the Senate in the tank skid, then the water is rejected from the tank skid, but the fresh water supply is continuous. And users have the ability to set alarm parameters within the system, which can be communicated in a number of ways. So that's uh, the details in, in words. Let's take a look at a picture. Here's how it looks, starting with the homogenizer. So the water which is used in the homogenizer, the cooling water and lubrication water is collected in the tank skid. And as I mentioned, it's screened and monitored and rejected if it's out of tolerance going to drain. But assuming that it's intolerance and there's nothing wrong, then the water is pumped to the sanitation skid. And there it's treated with filtration and sanitizing and also cooled so that the heat from the homogenizer transmission is removed and the water is then automatically monitored and prepared to the temperature required to the homogenizer. The sanitation skid also has the clean water supply so that the fail-safe supply un uninterrupted is maintained to the homogenizer in the event of any alarm. And in terms of location, the tank skid is typically placed right next to the homogenizer and the sanitation skid can be up to 22 meters of piping away. So let's take a look at some questions that typically come up when people look at the system in terms of the operation and maintenance. So one is whether it can be integrated with plant control systems, and the answer is yes. A standard system has live water quality values displayed, system statuses, and for example, recycled water volume. 
This can be communicated through an Ethernet connection to a variety of plant control systems and platforms. And then are there any special skills required to operate or maintain the system? And the answer is no. It's fully automatic, taking the start-start signal either locally or remotely. And then normal operator skills are quite sufficient to operate the system for the uh, standard operation. And then finally, in terms of maintenance and calibration, what's required? There's a number of steps. One is filter changes in the sanitation skid, which is recommended every three months. And also sensor calibrations that are recommended every six months. So we offer an exchange program for those sensors to be exchanged or returned for calibration. And finally, the UV bulbs are typically replaced annually. No special training or skills are required to do the maintenance steps. Um, it's easily taken care of by a typical service engineer. So those are some of the key elements of how the system works. Now I'd like to talk about the key benefits of the system and what it brings for a typical installation. So we've summarized it on this table here. What value does it bring? Well, firstly, water reduction. Uh, bottom line is it recycles up to 97% of the water required by homogenizers. And the 3% difference is the water that's required for startup and also some internal loops and re regenerations during the operating cycles. So 97% is the recycling uptime. That provides significant cost saving potential, particularly in areas of high water cost, as well as helping to meet your sustainability goals. It also insulates you from future water increases or shortages or increases in cost or shortages of supply. So it provides a future proof water reduction system. Second benefit that's important is that it's automatic and it's producing process quality water. So two important elements there. In terms of the water quality, it meets or exceeds the pasteurized milk ordinance standard for category one water, but the system is also designed to be compliant with 3A standards for homogenizers in terms of the use of water. It's fail safe and redundant controls ensure continuous operation and all of those sensors and monitoring provide homogenizer leak detection instantaneously rather than having to do visual checks or periodic checks today. The automation then continues to the continuous water quality monitoring systems and the water temperature control systems to ensure that the water is returned to the homogenizer at the optimum temperature and flow for the cooling and lubrication duty. And finally, in terms of installation and integration, it's a plug and play system. It'll fit APV and other brand homogenizers. It's a compact system and with self-contained controls and easy installation procedures, it really is a simple system to get started with and to set up in any customer's location. Take a look at some of those technical features in a little more detail here on the next slide. Won't go into all of the features. You can read them yourself on the website or the brochure, but just drawing attention to some of the main technical elements on the left hand side. Um, it's a washdown construction, so it's stainless steel covered and fully protected for use in a typical process environment. It's got the HMI and PLC built in allowing remote access as well as local control capability. And then I've mentioned the communications through Ethernet protocols. The system is designed with sanity, sanitary quick fittings for easy installation. You'll notice on the drawings on the right, it's a little small, but the connections are all placed conveniently in one place on the sanitation skid. Those are typically tri-clamp connections ready to install the pipework quickly. And the interconnecting cables come with ready wired plugs. So those are also easy to implement. And then the models we'll run into later in the presentation, three models are available across the range. And in terms of the water capacity, the overall system capacity is over 2,200 litres per hour. So more than enough for any homogenizer, whether it's an older one or a larger one, or two homogenizers, as we'll explain when we look at the models. Notice also the small footprint. Um, the dimensions are shown on the right. It, 
the sanitation skid is 1.3 by 600 millimetres approximately, and the tank skid is 825 by just under 600 millimetres. So it won't be difficult to find a space to install these next to your homogenizer in typical process environments. So having looked at some of the technical details, now I want to talk a little bit about how we go to implement it and what steps we would consider when looking at whether the HWRS is a good solution for your customers or your process line. So let's talk first about the target applications and the factors to look at. I've talked about the volume of water and we're targeting this particularly at continuous processes with long running hours. Also medium and large homogenizers, which tend to have larger volumes of water consumed. And high water cost or high water treatment cost areas. And all of these not only bring water reduction in itself, but also reduce the operating cost. Depending on the individual circumstances, not all of these three factors have to be present, but certainly two or more will give the best return on the investment. And then in terms of the process lines themselves, the system is designed for non-aseptic, so non-sterile homogenizer applications. And that's simply because with an aseptic or downstream sterile homogenizer, the plunger lubrication water has to be treated in a different way. It has to be sterile, and there's a higher level of integrity around the sterilization and reuse of that water. So today the system has been targeted for the uh, non-aseptic homogenizer applications. And remember the system can be supplied with a new investment, a new homogenizer, but also retrofitted on any existing homogenizer of any brand, not just APV. So here's a table showing the different models that are available. The first one is the single model, and this has one homogenizer connected to one HWRS system. So that one homogenizer is served by one water supply line at constant temperature. Typically the case for installation on older homogenizers or where the plunger lubrication water temperature isn't critical. The second is called the single plus model, still connecting one homogenizer to one HWRS, but this time there are two water recycling lines with differentiated temperature outputs. So the lubrication and plunger, uh, plunger lubrication water and the cooling water can be supplied at different temperatures. And then lastly, we have the dual model. Here we have two homogenizers connected to one system and the two homogenizers are served by individual recycling lines with differentiated temperature outputs. So typically that would be valid when you have a process area where there are two homogenizers located close together and they can be served by one system. So looking then at what steps we take in terms of preparing for integration and installation. Well, it starts with a requirements questionnaire, typical questionnaire where we collect details of the homogenizer models, the utilities consumption data and other practical information such as the um, space and controls information. And if that initial assessment is of interest, then we'd look to do a site survey with ourselves or our local partners. During the survey, we'd look at the layout, the available space, the media streams available for the cooling of the water within the sanitation skid. We'd identify the potential HWRS locations. And as I may have mentioned, the sanitation skid can be 22 meters away from the tank skid. So there's some opportunities there for um, moving it to a different area of the process room. We identify the interconnecting piping and wiring routes and also discuss the controls and communication expectations. Once of all, all these details are collected, your SPX flow representative will prepare an offer based on those inputs. And so it's relatively simple, collect some information in a questionnaire, and then if the initial assessment is of interest, we do the site survey, and then we make the formal quotation. So here's the previous table showing the consumptions for the different homogenizer sizes, and I'm giving an indication of the payback. So we have the consumptions at the 6,000 hours per year example, which we took earlier. And remember that was up to 7 million liters of water on the biggest or oldest homogenizers. 
And in terms of the approximate investment payback, we've looked at a water rate combined for supply and sewerage of three to five dollars per meter cubed. Of course, these water rates will vary depending on the particular circumstances. And then starting with the, the payback, looking at the highest consumption at the bottom row, then the payback will vary from one and a half to three years based on those three to five um, meters, uh, dollars per meter cubed rate of water. And then, of course, as the consumption drops, then the payback period gets longer as we get up to the medium. So the cutoff point practically for the system being um, purely on a return on investment is somewhere in the medium homogenizer sector. It's not designed for the scalability of a small homogenizer or a low water consumption homogenizer installation. Now, of course, this is just an indic indicative example, and the actual result will depend on many factors, uh, such as the water rate and the consumption and other local factors. And this is also based on a single system solving a single homogenizer. If you had two homogenizers with double the consumption and you serve them with a dual HWRS system, then the payback will be reduced considerably because of the one system serving two homogenizers. So this is just an example as an illustration, and we'd be happy to discuss more details as we look at specific examples on your exact situation. So in summary, why, why now and why, why is this innovation? Why is it the right time? Well, other systems have been tried in the past to save homogenizer water consumption, but none of them are as complete in terms of taking care of the continuous supply, the integrity of the water, the controls. So the HWRS system is truly a groundbreaking technology that allows you to start saving water and money now. And just think about the reduction in water if you have multiple homogenizers in your line. Now we have the potential to save millions of litres of water with this system. That water could be put to good use for many other things, whether just to save water for its own sake and therefore save money, or also potentially to expand um, process um, uh, capacity in other areas where water supply is constrained. And of course, it helps with sustainability goals whichever way they come. So as we say here, every drop counts, and that's no more so true than now with the increased awareness of water cost and the environmental consequences of overconsumption of water. So you can contact your SPX flow office directly or your local representative to find out more. I've also got our website link here where we have more information on the system, um, also a data sheet which can be downloaded and shared. And now we'll turn to some questions that may have come up during the presentation and uh, be happy to answer those questions. Hi everyone, thank you. And now we'll just take some questions if we have any from the participants. I'm joined here by my colleague Alvin Lee, who's our regional salesperson. Thank you, Alvin. Um, Hello, Ryan. So please feel free to the go, go to the Q&A panel on the screen to, uh, to raise your questions. Okay, um, one question that we have is uh, in terms of how the, um, how the uh, sanitation skid and the tank skid work to ensure that any um, leaks and any problems are detected. So the tank skid is the key to this, where the water is collected. Um, and the sensors in the tank skid take care of monitoring that water quality. And that consists of a total dissolved solids sensor, a turbidity sensor, and a temperature sensor. So this is, this is really how the integrity of the system is managed through those sensors, so that we can be sure that no um, out of tolerance water is going to drain. Thank you. I see another question coming in here on the return on investment, and is it um, seems high. Of course, this is an example based on a, way, a range of water flows. And what we see when we talk to customers, um, it really depends on the, on the policy and on the customer situation. 
The ROI itself will vary according to the water costs. We showed a range here to give an indication. And many customers that we talk to have got different ROI um, uh, expectations when it comes to initiatives to save water and for CapEx. So it's um, it really depends on the customer and how they view those kinds of investments. And of course, the higher the consumption, um, or if we're able to uh, use a dual system with two homogenizers, then the ROI is improved. Thank you for that question. So let's see here. Um, another question uh, that comes up regularly is, um, yes, and we have, how, why don't we have more homogenizers connected to the system? Why just two? Well, the system is designed around two homogenizers because we need to ensure that when the homogenizers are operating in different situations, one on, one off, or one with different flow and temperature requirements, that the system can deal with those requirements um, independently. If we had uh, more than two, three, four homogenizers, then we would have a situation where the controls would be very complex. And for example, if there was a um, packing leak on one homogenizer, which caused the water to um, be rejected, then the whole system would be um, thrown into um, some instability and possibly not recycle. So we keep it to two homogenizers to allow the system to operate with the necessary controls and instrumentation. Thank you. So any other uh, questions coming through? So another question, uh, how much power consumption does the system require? And the answer is not very much. So it's less than half a kilowatt typically power consumed for the small pump and the instruments on board. Thank you. So just a reminder, please feel free to add your questions to the Q&A tab. So I see a question um, on the chat about uh, Lab 2000 uh, homogenizing of powering. Can I suggest that you raise that question with your local SPX representative? Um, very happy to find a solution to that for you. Thank you. Okay, another question here. Can this be applied to a high pressure pump system? Yes, it can. It, um, the system will work equally well whether the homogenizer is configured um, as a traditional homogenizer or just as a high pressure pump. Um, the same water consumption will be used. So the actual um, configuration, whether it's a pump or homogenizer, uh, doesn't affect the operation of the unit. Thank you for that question. Um, and then another question here in terms of the um, the slide we had with the definition of um, small, medium, and large. So in terms of the um, APV homogenizer range, which many of you will be familiar with, um, the large would be the 185Q model and above the 315, the 132Q um, in some situations is using more. And then the medium would be the 110, the 57, 77 size models. So thank you for that question. Okay, once again, please feel free to, to ask more questions. Um, so I see another question here, um, which is um, in case of failure of the HWRS system, what would be the backup? That's a good question. So the first thing is, if there is a fault or an alarm on the HWRS system, um, there is no interruption to your water supply to the homogenizer. And that's achieved by um, the incoming water supply, which traditionally is connected directly to the homogenizer, is now correct connected to the HWRS sanitation skid. 
And if a fault develops, um, well, let's, let, let me say there's a number of things that can happen. So the first thing is if there's a, a quality a measurement on the water discharged, which indicates that it needs to be, um, that it can't be recycled, then the sanitation skid will immediately switch to using the incoming um, process water. So instead of recycling, then it's using fresh water. And secondly, if there's another fault, for example, some kind of, I don't know, power failure or alarm or pump failure, then the um, uh, control system on the HWRS uh, enables the water supply coming in to go through normally open valves. So it's fail safe to open. So in that way, the water supply to the homogenizer is again restored and not interrupted. So that's how they achieve the um, uh, the uh, fail safe operation if there are any alarms. Thank you for that question. So another question is if it can work with the um, the Rani 110 54X model. Yes, yes, it will. Um, it'll work with all of those models in that range. Thank you for that question. Just looking here to see if there's any others. Thank you for some very good questions coming in. So one question is, um, if the space available is limited, uh, often in older factories particularly, there can be limitations on the space available. Um, can the units be, um, uh, where can the units be put if the space is limited? Okay, so um, the sanitation skid, um, as mentioned, it can be located up to 20 meters away. So that could also be located um, on a platform or above the homogenizer, for example. The tank skid, which is collecting the water, that needs to be located um, at floor level next to the homogenizer so that it can collect the water draining from the homogenizer. Um, if, for example, you were only going to recycle the water from the, um, the power end cooling, well, that water is under pressure. So then there's more options to where to locate it. But normally the tank skid should be located at floor level and the sanitation skid can be located um, at other, other places. Um, and then um, that gives some, some more options. Part of the reason that the units are on wheels, um, we recognize that sometimes you're locating equipment like this in areas where you might need access for maintenance later. So it's very easy to uncouple it during um, maintenance um, and to move it if necessary. Thank you. So there's a question about use with um, aseptic production. So, Yes, that's a good question. And yes, I did mention that um, we're not targeting this at aseptic or sterile homogenizer lines. In principle, the technology works, but the, um, uh, the processes around sterile water um, generation, sterilizing the plunger lines before production means that the installation would be much more complex. Um, of course, the, the water, the recycled water can be sterilized, it's something that we're investigating as a to see how we can um, look at a standard integration. But right now, the system is only being offered for non-aseptic homogenizer installations. Thank you for that question. There's a, a question um, on the um, uh, a question on the whether the the material from this will be available and yes we'll be sending out um, details of where to download the information after the presentation thank you um there's a question here on the um, turbidity of the water output from the system um i need to check that specifically for you but uh, if i recall correctly then the system is monitoring for turbidity of up to um, five units. Um, and I have to remember the, the technical unit um, because at um, above a certain level of turbidity, then the UV sanitation and sterilization will be impacted. So we monitor the turbidity so that we know that the um, UV sterilization is going to be effective. Thank you.
Okay, so another question here, and thank you for these questions around um, what the maximum flow rate is for a single model, and um, is um, uh, is is there a certain feed pressure needed? So the uh, as you may have seen on the on the slide, there's a, a pump mounted on the tank skid, which is um, uh, collecting the water, whether it's pressurized water from the um, homogenizer. Um, gear cooling, or whether it's the plunger water, which is sometimes under pressure, sometimes it's uh, coming by gravity. So no, no specific pressure is needed. The tank skid is designed to pump out um, the water freely without any feed pressure level. And that pump has enough pressure to pump it through to the sanitation skid and then back into the recycling loop. Um, the maximum flow rate on the entire system, um, whether, well, on the dual system is 2,200 liters an hour approximately. Um, and it's on a variable speed um, pump, which is, um, so it can be turned right down to a very low flow rate. Um, so on the single model, um, it, it's actually capable of going up to, um, up to almost 2,000 liters an hour as well if need be. Of course, that's not needed for any normal operation. So the variable speed drive on the pump allows it to operate over the full range of the flow. So a related question, is it possible to combine this with um, pump water flush? And that's that's a really good question. We, we've had a lot of customers asking about how this technology might be used for collecting multiple pump um, water seals. We are looking at that at the moment. The, um, the practical challenge, I suppose, with pumps is you have a lot of pumps located in your process room. Um, you have a lot of seal water lines coming in and discharges typically to drain. So there's a lot of individual pipes to um, to, to route to a collection point. Um, so in, in principle, it could be routed into the tank skid and, and recycled in that way. But then we need to design some kind of a, a ring main system. So it is being looked at at the moment. It's not targeted at pumps, but it's uh, we're actively looking at whether we can scale the system in a different way uh, and use for pumps. But that's not uh, that's not on the market at the moment. Thank you. Um, same question or related question in terms of when it can be used um, with uh, a um, separator. Um, and um, in principle, yes. Uh, but again, we haven't uh, we haven't looked specifically at the the dynamics of that water. We see this as a platform which can be extended to other uses of water, for example, uh, pump separators, uh, potentially vacuum pumps. Uh, but these are these are areas for the future. So there's a couple of questions about the price range, um, and the um, the best way of illustrating that, I guess, was through the um, the ROI calculator. And if you do the maths backwards around the um, uh, around the the uh, the water rate and the water price, then the the price range of these units is going to be in the range of um, fifty five to seventy five thousand um, dollars installed, and that's the difference between the single and the dual unit. So again, that's why the, the four areas of um, focus are so important in terms of determining whether this is right for you or for your customers, if you're, if you're working in the industry, the water cost, the water consumption, the availability of water, and the sustainability. Um, and we, you know, we're quite open in the chart, we, showed, we didn't show an ROI for all the sizes. This won't be for everybody, but for those who have challenges in those four areas, this is a very good way of reducing your water consumption and your costs. So some more questions coming through. Um, okay, question about, um, about working through our, um, our, our channel partners and, and, and competing uh, in the market in China. I think, and that's a general question, really, I guess, not just HWRS. Thank you for the question. I think what we bring as we bring this technology and we bring our equipment in general, we bring um, a vast global experience, not only for homogenizers um, themselves and the technology, but particularly how they integrate with um, customer systems through our own direct experience and through our experience over many years working with integrators 
and with uh, other partners. So that's what we we can bring. But um, Alvin can connect you with um, the team, the sales team in China, if you'd like to take a further discussion on that. And we'd be very happy to to do that, and also to welcome people to our manufacturing facility in Shidu, China, when uh, when the rules allow. Thank you. Just checking. Yeah, actually, mainly there's not much different. Like, uh, the way we go to the market, our go to market approach is always uh, we have uh, some global key accounts for SPX. We deal directly with uh, key accounts. And uh, then we also have uh, many um, authorized channel partners who deal with the rest of the customers. So the way to the market is the same for this HRPIS as well. Yeah, same approach. Thanks, Alvin. All right, once again, if you'd like to raise a question, um, please go to the, the, the Q&A panel. Let's just give a moment, see if any, any other questions coming through. Okay, just give another couple of moments. I'm not seeing any new questions at the moment. Alvin, do you see any that I've missed? Or no, you, you covered all, yeah. Okay. Well, we had some really good questions coming through, and thank you for, for the range. And uh, uh, hopefully we've, um, through the presentation and the Q&A, we've given you some um, good answers and, and that you can see some opportunities uh, for this unit, we're we're ready to welcome your inquiries and also our partners throughout the region. Okay, so I think if there are no more questions, let me just check again. Um, then let's. Um, Let's let's wrap up. And I want to thank everybody for joining today. Um, it's really great that so many people were able to attend. Um, this is new. It's uh, it's something that isn't on the market. So I'm sure you'll have some other questions as well, maybe as you look at the think about what you've heard and look at the information when we send it through. So once again, thank you. Please don't hesitate to contact us through your local um, channels or myself or Alvin. To, um, to ask for the questions. Um, we'd be delighted if you could take a survey as you exit the webinar. Uh, it really helps us to learn and to uh, make improvements for the future. It's a very fast survey, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't take long. Um, it's a pop-up when you exit. We will be sending a copy of the APV Dairy Handbook electronically to everybody who completes the survey. So thank you very much for um, in advance for your participation. Um, once again, thanks for joining today. It's been our pleasure to share this with you. Um, and with that, we'll close the webinar. Thank you.